Hey everybody, it's Matt from the house and in this video we're going to show you a few of our favorite POW boards for the 21-22 season. Let's check these out. Alright, first up we got a nice saucy saucy board. This is the Jones Ultra Craft. If you're familiar with Jones and you're familiar with some of their boards, you'll recognize the hovercraft shape in this one. This is basically the hovercraft, but it's been souped up with some basalt stringers. It also has their Ultra Core and their 9900 base. So super fast, super snappy, super lively, and very, very lightweight. Not that the hovercraft itself isn't lively, but this is kind of like the next level for those very, very aggressive riders. I mean, right off the bat in the shape of this thing, obviously we got a really, really long nose, really, really short tail, slight swallow too, and basically this is meant to get the board so the tail sits down in the deep snow and the nose goes up, because you don't want the nose sinking. And this thing is basically gonna do exactly what kind of what its name is, is it's the hovercraft, so it wants to get up and try to get above the snow. Another cool thing about this one is the 3D con concave base, so in the nose and even in the tail a little bit, uh, the Jones boards basically have kind of a little bit of a spooned out nose and tail. This basically helps push the snow not just this way from the board, but also away from the sides and makes the board want to float a little bit higher when it gets into that deep, deep snow. Really cool thing about this board is that when there's no pow, it actually is a really, really good all mountain board. It does have a lot of nose, but when you kind of look at it, a lot of it is beyond your contact point. So this thing actually feels a little less directional when you are riding it on flat groom trails. All right, next up, we've got the LibTech Travis Rice Orca. This board actually transcends a lot of different uh, categories. It actually is a really good all mountain board. If you want to ride it as your one board, again, from contact point to contact point, when you're riding on flat snow, it actually feels really, really close to a twin tip board. So it actually goes from all mountain all the way up to pow boards. But again, in the powder, this thing is very, very notable just because one, it's a volume shift board. You're going to downsize three to six centimeters from what you would usually ride. So you get a board that's a little bit more nimble. It has that extra width, so it actually still wants to float like a bigger board, but it's a lot easier to get it around, especially if you're riding some pow in some trees. We got that nice long nose. We got that real quick kick in the tail too that's very, very short. So again, this thing does want to sit down when you get it into the deep snow and that nose wants to lift up and you'll notice that it's a very long, gradual kick. That makes the board actually want to plane off more instead of plow when you get it in the deep snow. Another thing that's cool about this board is that it has their mixed glassing, so it's kind of right in between. It's basically got one sheet of biax and one sheet of triaxle fiberglass. So you get a little bit of the quickness of the tracks, you get a little bit of the smoothness of the biax for that perfect balanced medium flex board. And it also has their C2 where it's rockered in the middle, camber in the nose and tail. So you basically get a board that really, really wants to float and it has that middle tipping point. So when you do get back on it just a tiny, tiny bit, it's gonna help again the board raise up on top of the powder without you having to lean back too far. All right, next up is the Wizard from Santa Cruz. Classic Santa Cruz look to this one, obviously. But we got really, really cool board. Obviously, you can go out and you can rail hard on this thing. It is a little bit stiffer, so it does want to really, really lay a hard edge when you are riding on you know, non-powder conditions. But we've got a directional camber where it's cambered in the back, rockered in the nose, and then combo that with the wider, longer nose, the shorter, narrower, and swallowed out tail. And this thing really, really wants to sit in the powder just right. So you don't have to lean back. You don't get that leg burn and you can stand a little more centered up on this thing and the board it's is going to do the floating for you. We're doing a biax fiberglass in this thing too so it has a nice easy smooth feel and then another cool thing is they actually the edges go all the way around through that swallow but they are really really beefed up in the swallowtail area just because if you're riding some powder there's always a chance there's some rocks down there and it just helps make that end of the board just a little bit more durable. All right arguably one of the coolest boards in this lineup is actually going to be the Capita Slush Slasher. This this thing's got a pretty cool story. Basically, this is the same construction as one of their park boards, the Pathfinder. Pretty much the same core, pretty much the same fiberglass and everything, which sounds crazy for a powder board, but the really cool thing is, is it's a very, very wide, short board. You're gonna ride this thing 10 centimeters shorter than you usually would, but it's gonna be super, super wide, which is gonna give it extra float. The other thing that's cool too is it might still have the same flex as a park board, which really doesn't do well in powder at all, 
But the fact of where the board actually is sitting, not only the width, but where your stance is, if you actually take that flex and you're standing in the middle of the board, it's a soft board overall. But with this board, you've got all this area in the nose, and that actually makes the nose want to flex more. And then you actually are standing way, way back on the tail. So you're actually only flexing this much of the tail. So even though overall it might be a softer board, in the back, the back can't flex that much. And that basically makes for a board that actually wants to sit up higher in the powder. So the cool thing about this thing is that it does ride powder unbelievably well, but you can still go out and play around in the park. The reason they call it the slush lasher is you get into those soft, slushy days, and with this flat rocker in the nose and tail, this thing plows through the slush. It doesn't get bogged down and sucked down into that heavy, wet snow. But again, likewise, when you get this thing into the powder, it wants to get up and float on top of the powder really, really big. So if you've always wanted to get a powder board, but maybe your pockets aren't too deep, this is a great, great value and actually a pretty fun board that you can ride in the park in those springtime days, but you can obviously take it out on those deep pow days as well. All right, next up, we've got the Service Dog from Rome. Super, super cool board. We're doing a lot of the similar features that you're going to see on a lot of the POW boards. We're doing that taper on the front so the nose is wider than the tail. It's got 20 millimeters of taper so it's got a lot of extra nose and just a little bit narrower tail. And then also we've obviously got that longer nose which you can see how long that nose is compared to the shortness and that tiny swallow in the tail. But again all these things, the more you add to the nose the more you take away from the tail, the more this board wants to float really really well in the powder and the less you actually have to work at it. We do have a directional camber on this one where it goes camber in the majority of the board to a rocker in the nose. Again, getting you that extra flow, but still giving you that power in between your feet. And another cool thing is the bamboo hot rods that they have in this thing. It's actually this raised up piece in the nose of the board. Basically what that is, just an extra little extra piece in the front there to make the nose a little bit stiffer because it doesn't want to plow the snow. It actually wants to get up on top of the snow and kind of plane off when you get into the deeper stuff. And if that wasn't enough to get this board floating, we also have their diamond 3D shape where the nose is actually kind of dished out a little bit. And you can see it just right in the light. There's a line that goes from here up to here on both sides. And essentially, it's like the board is actually bent up on the side. So it does make the nose a little more catch free, but also it's not just pushing the snow away from the board this way, it's pushing it away this way and this way too. So you're actually getting full clearance and ultimate float out of everything that this board has. All right, last up, uh, one of my favorite shapes this year for the POW boards and even for free ride boards, because this thing actually is a really, really good board to go out and lay down super, super hard carves on groomers and too. But we've got the Chamonix Powder Seeker. So super, super big nose. It's longer, it's wider, but also it's very shoveled out. So instead of rounding this off, they're actually keeping it kind of a squared off on the nose and tail, and that gives you even more float, just like with all the other boards. The more you've got in the nose, the more the nose of the board wants to get up. Likewise, in the tail, we've got a much shorter kick, it's narrower, and we got that swallow tail too. So again, everything about this board wants to get the nose up, get the tail down. Really cool thing about this board is that it does have their biaxle fiberglass, so it has that nice, easy, smooth feel, but it does have some carbon in it too, so it doesn't feel dead underneath your feet. Um, it actually is a very, very stiff, stiff board. We're getting into that, I'd say, medium stiff, maybe seven to eight out of 10 range. This board is a board where if the powder is getting tracked out, you can really go out and lay down some trenches and you can get this thing really, really far up on edge too because it does have a little extra width through the middle of the board compared to a normal width board. All right, well, thanks for checking out just a few of our favorite POW boards for the 21-22 season. We can't show all of them to you because then the video would just be way, way too long. But if you got any questions about these boards or any of the other POW boards that we've got at the house com. Leave some comments down below. We're on there every single day trying to answer your questions. We want to make sure we get you into some rad gear, but more importantly, we want to make sure that it's actually going to work for you and your riding style. Make sure that you like, subscribe, definitely get that notification bell on too so you can find out when all the new videos drop. And if you like to go out and go fast and float in the power, or you just want something nice and easy to just kind of tool around on, grab yourself a power board and get out and ride because any day of riding is a good day of riding.